Hey y'all, I just wanted to do a video update. We've been uh, like outside working uh, because it's hot. That's why I'm not wearing my clerics. Tennille, apparently you're not bothered by this weather. No, no, not. I mean, I think, I don't know if all of you know, but I'm from the Bahamas and then I moved from Dallas in December. So I like being outdoors. Yeah, I'm hating my life. <laughs> so the, um, <laughs> it's not true, yeah. but uh, it is hot. Uh, the, so yeah, I, I just want to do a little video. I know that, um, you know, some of you saw on the live stream last week, or if you were at mass last week, you saw that you know Tennille is uh, one of the new staff members, one of the new ministers here at the parish, right? Um, and uh, but I wanted to kind of put it out there a little bit more broadly about like you know, introducing her, and then also talking about something new that we're going to be kind of introducing here uh, soonish, actually. And so, uh, but first things first is like. Uh, Tania, what's the, what's the title of your position? So my title is Director of Discipleship and Small Groups. Yeah, and so small groups is like something I was saying that like I've been really desiring for the parish just because when you look at the history of the church, small groups have been like constitutive, like they've been really important. And even right now, still like parishes that have these small groups, have these little small communities that are walking together in the Lord are really, uh, there's something new that Jesus brings to the table with the community, with the people. And something I've, I've been deeply desiring and for my own life has been super helpful because I'm part of a movement, uh, a new movement in the church, and which is essentially, I belong to a small group myself. And I've been in a, the same small group for, oof, since 2008. So nice. yeah, so, so every week since 2008, I've been in a small group uh, and it's been, it's been beautiful. So, um, you know, what happens in a small group, basically sharing faith, praying together, having a relationship with each other and growing deeper in friendship. And it's because of the presence of Christ in a very particular way. And so it, it's, a, it's a marvelous experience. And it's a place where, I, like I was saying at mass, where you can, you're learning, we're learning to be committed to each other because of Christ's presence. And like if somebody's struggling, you're able to be a presence for them. If you're if you're in the struggle, they're able to be a presence with you. If there's something you're celebrating and you're excited, there's people to share that beauty with, right? Or to be taken into beauty with your friend. It's super wonderful. And the discipleship itself is simply is the experience of uh, going deeper and deeper into this relationship with Christ, where my life becomes progressively oriented around His desire and His plans for me. And what ends up happening in discipleship uh, is essentially this, is that I give my life over to Christ and he takes it and, and speaks into it and he gives it back to me in an even more beautiful way than I would have expected. And so, so Tennille is like essentially the minister that is going to be kind of uh, helping with, the, with those aspects, right? So, and you've been doing discipleship for a long while now. Well, it has to be a part of my life too, right? And I think that is what is so helpful to me. Like it's come from experience, come from experience of a first encountering who Jesus is. Just It's not just about what happens when I'm in church or in mass, but it's actually, oh, I'm called to be in relationship with Jesus. If he's done so much for me. And so I've been able to live it from a personal experience, but also really experiencing being in mission over the last over 20 years um, working in nonprofits and working in different dioceses to be able to help to transmit to whichever community I'm in the significance of being in relationship with Christ, both in a church, both in your personal life and community, wherever that is. So I'm excited about the opportunities that are ripe here in our parish community. I know there's a lot of eagerness that are around creating um, not just groups for the sake of getting together because you can sign up anywhere to do you know whatever whatever hobby or activity this is really about um, sharing experience together sharing a person that um, we have in common which is Christ himself and realizing that he actually is the purpose right that brings us together yeah. he's at the core of it and it's because of him that I'm willing to not just willing but I'm able to receive someone and I should be trying to look on them as I would on him if he's walking among us today. So we'll learn in this together on, um, but it's where it's in process that we'll start rolling it out and we'll start rolling out uh, something. Something new. And which is the new thing that suddenly is basically adoration. Now I don't remember if you have the memory from Corpus Christi about six, eight weeks ago. I did that thing if you're at mass or maybe saw on the live stream 
uh, was where I, I, I took the Blessed Sacrament into this gold uh, contraption called the Monstrance, right? And I went around and I blessed everybody individually with it. But also before that, we had a period of silence and prayer uh, before the Blessed Sacrament. Remembering that the Blessed Sacrament is Jesus really truly present. And, and that experience of being, of being before the Lord in the sacrament of the Eucharist is called adoration, right? And uh, adoration, literally, I mean, you can probably understand it, it comes from adoring, right? To adore the Lord. And so adoration is something that has been transformative for so many people in my life, uh, your life, right? And um, where being before the Lord in that way changes you. It changes me, it's changed me. And my, uh, you know, this encounter with the Lord, that's just one, like this really beautiful, like almost primary way of really just being in front of and having an encounter with his love and mercy. Uh, for me, like in my own prayer practices, my own habits, you know, I spend an hour, you know, a day before the Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Um, in prayer, just allowing him to, to, to look at me and for me to be with him. And in my own struggle of like, you know, okay, Lord, I'm in front of you, but I don't really want you to see me today, you know, <laughs> or, you know, or just sharing with them something. And so, uh, but, and also for your own life, I mean, that's been transformative. You're, you know. Yeah. So you're talking about sharing just different experiences earlier and right. Just, I mean, for me being, being able to go to adoration or being in prayer is about being with a, a friend that knows me better than anyone else, but also someone that I trust. So in my own my own prayer, my own relationship with Christ, I try to set a time, some time, uh, every day, um, particularly at the start of the day, even if it's just thanking him for uh, the opportunities that I have coming, I'm thanking him for my health. I mean, sometimes things just go all over the place and I'm like totally distracted or I, I don't even think about it and at the end of the day I go, oh, okay, like I'm trying to, I'm trying to give something of my life intentionally to the Lord, but uh, most importantly, when I can take any moment, it doesn't have to be an well, hour long, it doesn't, you know, it's just a moment where I'm saying, wait a minute, God, like, you became men, you still living among us. And so help me to be aware in my daily life of, of the invisible realities that are right here. We say it every Sunday when we're in mass, but we in the creed of those invisible realities that are right here present among us. And so that's, that's one of the key things for me in prayer. I ask our Lord for that help of realization that I'm not alone. Uh, that I that I know that he's supporting me every step of the way um, and that I can lean on him and it doesn't always feel like that because sometimes the, the weight of things can make it seem pretty hard um, but to know that the more and more I spend time with a friend the more we get to know each other if that happens with my with my friends that I you know have best friends with someone from childhood the same thing's going to happen with the Lord like we can't get to know him and trust him Without, unless we're actually yeah, spending time him. with him exactly and you were saying before like you had an image we did this take beforehand until i realized that it deleted take the, two take two uh you're you give the image of like a child like yeah like, like we all do adoration already absolutely and if any of you have been fortunate enough to be with a newborn or a young baby in these you know, months or however long it's been. But you know, when you just get to hold a baby and that's adoration, because what do you do? You're just letting this little thing snuggle up to you and you're just, you can just lose time just gazing into the eyes of this, this tiny little thing that could be, you know, spitting up on you and doing all kind of other unpleasant things, right? But at the same time, you're just loving, right? This little one and like admiring all the different, the, the small aspects, the little toes, the eyes, and you just like flip a baby around and just like everything is, um, is you're adoring. And, but you know what's the best part about it? When you lock eyes with the baby, when they actually, they, you know, they finally look at you and you're like, ah, now, this little one is adoring me. And so that's, for me, that's what adoration is. It's this looking on someone like, and the, the being totally admired and letting the Lord look back yeah. at me and say, I see you as you are and I love you. Yeah. And then for me, it's like, the, the, it turns into the reverse where it's like, well, I mean, the, the experience of like, I don't have to do anything for the babe, you know, for this person to smile at me, right? I'm not performing. Right, it's just the simplicity, right? The simplicity of being, of seeing, of looking. But also, what ends up happening is, is that like 
I somehow, in adoration, find the reality where I actually become like the child in this, the, the baby in this, where mm -hmm. I see the Lord's face in front of me and I just respond, right? I just respond in that simplicity. So the Lord, in adoration, responds with some, you know, teaches us this trust, the simplicity, the surrender, this peacefulness, uh, because he's, he does everything. He can do everything, and it's just being in front of him gives us an awareness of our true identity, right? Like that we can rest in him. He's present everywhere, right? It's like a reminder that when I walk out that door of that adoration chapel, uh, or, you know, when I walk out from mass, you know, it's this reminder that I can look for him and like it rest in him everywhere. But um, yeah, and, it, and it's, yeah, so it's been huge. So we're gonna be having some more details about this coming out. Uh, and then maybe, you know, we can have some, you know, I loved your witness from the last take, the original take we did about like those guys coming to the, to the Bahamas and just being like, oh yeah, being on mission. Yeah, being and, on mission. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll give some. We'll, we'll put together probably some witnesses for you in the future. But but even before that, we're gonna start talking more about like what adoration looks like, where it's gonna be, like how we're gonna roll this out. So you'll be hearing more from us. Yeah, we've been we've been scheming. <laughs> So anyway, God bless you guys, and I'll see you on Sunday. And uh, if you haven't met Tennille yet on Sunday, make sure you introduce yourself to her. Don't be shy. Yeah. And then keep praying a rosary for her. So. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. God bless y'all.